Support and resistance are one of the most important things in day trading. Most institutional investors and professional traders are trading support and resistance because they show the human behavior and also they show the market structure. So mastering the support and resistance in day trading is the key to your success as a beginner day trader. In this video, I'm going to show you how to identify the support and resistance and how to trade them. Let's get started. I'm going to cover the following topics. Number one, the support and resistance basics. I'm going to show you what levels can be served as the support and resistance. Number two, how to use the support and resistance in day trading. There are mainly three ways. The first one is for the level boundary reversal. And the second one is the level breakout. And the third one is serve as the profit target. In the last section, I'm going to show you some examples in day trading. What are the support and resistance levels? So basically, the support and resistance levels are the horizontal levels and the value zones. Here, the level and value zone are interchangeable. So there are two scenarios. The first one is the market goes to a price level and then it bounces back quickly. That defines a support and resistance level. Second, when the market goes to a price level and it consolidates for a while, and then there are two results there. The first one is the market can continue the previous trend direction or the market can reverse to the opposite direction. Both results will also define the support and resistance levels. How to identify the support and resistance levels? There are few scenarios. The first one is you can use the previous day's high or low. So in this chart, we can see yesterday we have a high and then we can draw a level across the high horizontally. And then in today's chart, we can see right after the open, the market goes up to test the uh, high. The first time, it failed. And then the second time, it also failed. And then the market goes up again to break this level here. And then it succeeds. And then the market goes back to test this level again. So clearly, you can see the previous day's high and the low can serve as a very good support and resistance levels. We can also use today's previous high and low as the support and resistance levels. Here's an example. The market opens and then goes up, make a high here. And then it goes down, make a low here. Then we can draw horizontal levels on the high and the low. And then we can see the market later on goes up to retest the highs here. And also it goes down to retest the low here. So today's previous high and low can serve as the support and resistance levels. Today's previous consolidation can also serve as the support and resistance levels. Here's an example. After the market opens, it goes down here and then it consolidates a little bit. Then we can draw a horizontal level across the consolidation. Then the market goes down and goes up, ignore this level. And then here you can see that it's testing today's previous high. And then the market goes down here, a retest the consolidation the first time and the second time. So you can see previous consolidation in today's chart can also serve as the support and resistance levels. Highs and lows from days ago can also serve as the support and resistance. Here's an example. Two days ago, we have a high and we can draw a horizontal level. Yesterday, you can see the market goes up to test this level. Here's the big tail here. That means it's testing the level. However, it succeeds and then it goes up to penetrate this level. And this level is also recently visited. Today, after the market open, it goes down to test this level again. So highs and lows from days ago sometimes can also serve as the supporting resistance levels. Levels or value zones with multiple touches from multiple days are also very good support and resistance levels. Here's an example. On some day, there's a low and then we can draw a horizontal value zone. You can see that the following days, it's been touching this level and the value zone for multiple times. And then that means the market respect this value zone and the level very much. The more touches, the stronger the support and resistance levels. Pivot levels and pivot points are also good support and resistance levels. For how to calculate the pivot points or more information, you can search online. 
and most of the broker platforms will provide this indicator so you can just set it up very easily so here's an example we have this r1 level and we also have this s1 level yeah you can see the market goes down to test this s1 level for two times and then it goes up to test this r1 level for four times so we can use the pivot levels as the support and resistance levels as well sometimes the market open can also serve as the support and resistance levels especially the london and new york open here's an example here's the uh, london open bar and then if we draw a horizontal level we can see that the market later on go back to test these levels for two times numbers are also very good levels for example for euro usd currency 1.3400 definitely will be a very good support or resistance levels for bitcoin 46,000 for ESE mini S&P 500 4,500 points like a crude oil $60 or the Tesla $1,000 these are also the um, some target for the institutional investors because they're not seeking the uh, profit actively but they're hedging their positions so these levels will be very important for them there are few rules when we trade the support and resistance Number one, the support and resistance levels can swap their position, which means the previous support level can become resistance levels later on. Number two, it's better to apply the value zone rather than just a single line, especially when you are trading the higher time frame. Number three, you need to draw the levels in advance because that will help you define your profit target and also see when the market will go. Number four, we need to observe the behavior around the levels because when the market goes to a level it can reverse or it could penetrate number five to be conservative when we trade the support and resistance because occasionally the support and resistance might not be reached number six we need to put more weight on the most recent levels rather than the levels from a while ago Support and resistance levels are very important in day trading. However, we also have other tools. Let's have a look at the comparison between the support and resistance with other tools. The first one is the trend line. Basically, both support and resistance levels and the trend line are very reliable. If we combine them together, they will be very, very powerful. Also, we have other indicators. But most of the indicators are secondary and they are lagging which means they don't have much forecasting power. However, they can work as the confirmation well, especially when the support and resistance levels and trend line do not work well or they do not appear to be on the chart. In this complete course series, I have a video on the trend line and also a video on the moving average that you can reference. Now let's move on to the second part how to use the support and resistance in the day trading. There are mainly three ways. Number one, we can trade the level boundary reversal. Number two, we can trade the level breakout. And number three, the support and resistance levels can serve as the profit target. Let's first take a look at the boundary reversal situation. Basically, the market most of the time is in the trading range, as we can see on this chart. And also, there should be multiple touches for the support and resistance. In this chart, we can see that the market makes three lows here and also two highs here. If we draw the horizontal levels, we can see that the market is on a parallel trading range. And then when the market goes down to touch either side of the uh, support or resistance levels, there will be good opportunities the market can bounce back. So here, example, the market goes down, touches the... Uh, support line and then it bounce back so there's a long opportunity again here there's another long opportunity and then when the market goes up to touch the uh, top resistance levels it's going to be a short opportunity here is one and here's another one and also we can use the uh, most recent touch as the reference to observe the market behavior for example for the short here we can see it's touching the uh, zone quite a few times and then reverse so it happens here again 
The same thing here is now bouncing immediately back. So we can also expect the market have the same behavior. It is very important when the market reaches the support or resistance levels, we observe the price action for confirmation whether the market can reverse or not, because the market can really penetrate the support or resistance levels. Another thing is about the profit target. If we can clearly see the support or resistance levels, we can set the profit target to be the other side. Otherwise, we can use the uh, realistic ones like uh, n times the risk you have. And another thing is that even if we have clearly see uh, support or resistance levels on the other side, it's possible that the market cannot reach it. So your profit target should be very realistic. Another scenario for the uh, boundary reversal is the uh, support and resistance position swapped. So basically we can see that the market makes three highs here, so it becomes a resistance level. When the market goes up here again, we can see this bear bar with a very big tail on, at the top. That means the market here respects this uh, resistance level a little bit. However, later on, it penetrates the level. And then when the market comes down here, you can see that it tested this level again. So this level becomes a support level. Then when the market goes up and goes down again to test this level again, there will be a good long opportunity here. Basically, we have to see a recent visit of the same support or resistance level before we can reach the decision that there's a go long opportunity. And then the, from the whole chart, we can see that it's definitely a uh, trading range behavior. Again, it is very important that we wait for a very good signal bar. So here comes a very good bull bar here. Then that means the market reversed. And in terms of the profit target, because there's only one support or resistance levels, we don't have the other side. So we can use the previous high or low as the profit target. So in this case that you can see the market goes up here to test this high. However, it didn't go to the top of this high. So the realistic profit target could be the close of this bear bar or this bull bar. Now let's move on to the level break situation. In this chart, we can see that there are two lows here. Then we can define the support or resistance level. When the market comes to the uh, level and then break it, we are waiting to see that first, it should break through, rather than just consolidating there. And second, it should break enough. I mean, it should go down further enough to make sure that it is a breakthrough rather than just consolidating. Because sometimes market due to the uh, momentum, it could just break a little bit and then reverse. And then we can trade for the pullback. Here comes two bull bars. These are the pullback. Then after that, there's a very good signal bear bar. We can go short at this opportunity. And we can trade for the second or the third leg down. In terms of the uh, profit target, we can also use the uh, measure move as the profit target or we can even use the end times your risk based on your study. Instead of using the supporting resistance levels as the uh, setup, we can also use for the profit target, like I mentioned in the previous trading range example. However, there are also other ways that you can set up your profit target. They include the trend line, the end times of your risk, the previous lag, or other levels that you can see from your chart. However, you should select one of the most reasonable ones. Second, you might think of taking part of your position off prior to the uh, supported resistance levels in case your profit target is beyond the supported resistance levels. That is because when the market reaches the supported resistance, it could really reverse. And also, another thing is that even for the supported resistance, it's possible that the market might not reach it. So if you don't take part of your position off, it's possible that your trade will end up in, as a losing trade. Now let's move to the last part of this video. So I will show you some trading examples. There are two types. The first one is the boundary reversal. And the second one is the level breakout. So comparing these two types, there are some differences. The first one is that for the boundary reversal, most of the time it will appear in the upper time frame because it's most likely like a trading range. So we can see them more in the 30 minutes, one hour or four hour charts. 
However, on the 5 minute or 15 minute charts, we don't see them quite often. Another thing is that the winning probability for this boundary reversal is not as high as the level breakout. That is because the boundary reversal most of the time is in the end of the uh, trading range. However, for the level breakout, normally it leads to a start of a new trend. That's why the level breakout have a higher winning probability. Another thing is that the level breakout usually will lead to both scalping and uh, swinging opportunities. That means you can take more profit if you catch the trade in the start of the trend. Let's first take a look at the boundary reversal example. So the market comes down here and here makes two lows so we can draw a level for the uh, support. And then when the market comes to the support level for the third time here, there could be a very good opportunity for you to go long. So what we are waiting for is to touch the uh, uh, level and then bounce back. We can see that this third touch reacts to the support immediately because we can see this big tail of this bear bar. That means this level is robust and then it's very strong. And then it increases the uh, opportunity or probability for the winning trade. And then we wait for the signal bar. Then we can use both this bear bar or this bull bar as the signal bar. The reason is because for this bear bar, it, it is a hammer type. So the tail is very big. It's strong support that we can enter at the top of this bear bar. Or we can wait for another bull bar to be more confident and enter at the top of the bull bar or even the close of the bull bar. In terms of the stop, we need to give it a little bit more room. That is because the uh, initial stop should be a protective stop rather than you put to the uh, uh, bottom of this bear bar as the actual stop. Only when the market goes your way, you can move your protective stop to the uh, actual stop at the bottom of this bear bar. Another thing is that as the market moves on, you can see if there's another pullback here. The reason that there's a pullback is because we can see it's the same situation in the previous touch here. We have the market comes down here to touch the uh, support level, bounce back, and then there's another pullback here and then it goes up. That's why uh, it comes to the uh, pullback here again. Also, another reason is that we are technical traders. We assume that the history the chart will repeat itself. That's why when we see the, this small pullback, we're expecting there's a pullback here as well. And then when you see this small pullback, again, you wait for the uh, very good signal bar. So this bull bar is a very good signal bar. You can enter at the top of this bull bar. That means if you enter the position here, so when you see the pullback, you can add on to your position to take more profit of this uh, support. However, if you didn't take the opportunity at the first touch, and then you can trade here, this is another opportunity for you to enter the market. Otherwise, you're going to miss this good trade. In terms of the profit target, based on the chart here, it's reasonable to set your profit target as the previous minor high here. And also, the reason that you can see this bull bar with a very big tail, it reaches your uh, previous minor high target However, there's a big tail there because the other traders in the market are using the, uh, the same profit target to take the profit. That's why there's a pullback here. After you take your profit at this bull bar, and then the market didn't go down further, instead, it comes with another good signal bull bar, which is a trend bar. And also, you can see that the pullback is very shallow. This bull bar is so big, that means the uptrend is very, very strong. What you want to do is to re-enter the market, even if you already took your profit at this bull bar. And then you put your uh, entry at the top of this bull bar, and then you can aim at the uh, profit target of even higher, like uh, this high or even this high. There are two options for the profit target. So basically, we can use either the measure move or the previous high or low. So let's take a look at the measure move first. We can see that there is one, two, three, four, five consecutive bull bars for this lag. That means it's a breakout mode. For the breakout mode with a shallow pullback, 
we can do the measure move for sure. And then we measure from the bottom of the first bow bar until the top of the uh, last bow bar for the first leg. And then we measure again from the uh, bottom of the pullback and then measure the same distance or same height. Then we can see the next bow bar after this signal bar, just this second bow bar here, the profit target is met by the measure move. The second option is we use the previous high. This is the previous high. We can either use the uh, top of the high or we can use the uh, close of any of the uh, bull bar or bear bar here. So basically you can see that both profit target are met. And also for the top of the uh, bear bar here for the um, this major high here, you can see that we have a bear bar with a big tail at the top. This also means other traders in the market are using the same profit target to take the profit. After this second leg up, you can see the market movement here. Basically, this is a stairs pattern. So for stairs pattern, it is high probability setup and 90% of the time, the trend will continue. So in my channel, I have a video on this stairs pattern that you can watch. And then if you choose to take this stairs set up and then enter a long position, you can think about a profit target like below. First, in the whole screen here, it is a trading range rather than a trending day. So your profit target should be conservative or realistic. Second, this is the first leg, second leg, and the third leg. For the second leg, it has the highest probability and the probability will be lower for the third, fourth, or fifth leg. So in terms of the, all these situations here we considered, we want to take one time of the risk to be conservative, to take the profit. And also we want to measure whether the one time of risk will reach the top of this high, because probably the market will test this high, it could reach or it might not reach. So when you see this pattern, you want to do the, uh, your calculation first before you enter the market. However, you can see that this stairs pattern leads to the continuation of the market to the upside. Now let's move on to the example for the level breakout. So take a look at this chart. First, we have a London open at this bull bar. And then we also have today's previous low like this level. If we draw this level, we can clearly see that the market first goes up and then goes down here to test this level. However, we also have other levels we can draw on the chart. The first one is this PV level, PP, and also the support level 1 and support level 2. And then when the market goes to the uh, London Open level here, we can see that it is crossing the London Open. However, with this bull bar and this bear bar, like I said, we are not sure whether it is uh, breaking through or it is just a reversal. So we wait a little bit and see the price action. Based on the price action in the following bars and also with the uh, previous bars, we can see that the bulls are very weak and the bears are strong. Before this breakout, we can see that we have the consecutive bear bars. Even though uh, the bear bars are not strong, however, they are consecutive. That means the strength of the uh, downtrend. And when we see the uh, bull bar here, it's very small. Bull bar very small. Uh, this is big, however, there's no consecutive bull bars. Here are consecutive bull bars, however, this bear bar and this bear bar reverse all the four bull bars. This is before the breakout. After the breakout, we can see that this bull bar is small, with two bear bars following, and then three bull bars. However, these three bull bars are small, and then only one bear bar can reverse all the three bull bars. All this means the bulls are very weak and the bears are strong. So we can determine that this is a downtrend. What we want to do is to wait for the pullback and then trade the pullback. Basically, there's another level, support one. We have to uh, observe the market price action when it goes around this support level. We don't want to enter the market so quick because when it touches the uh, support one, it could really bounce back to the upside. However, the market ignores this uh, support level one and then goes down and penetrates it. So at this moment, when we see this 
three consecutive bear bars penetrating this S1 level, we're sure that right now it's a downtrend. And then when the pullback comes, we want to trade for the pullback. Here comes the pullback. We can see these two bull bars here, reaching S1. However, it didn't penetrate the S1. Instead, its tail is at the top of the S1 and the body is at the bottom of S1. And also the next bar is a very good signal bear bar because the body accounts for 60% of its candlestick. And then we want to put our short order at the bottom of this bear bar to go short and take the downtrend. After taking the short position at this bear bar, we continue observing the market. What we can see is that here there are one, two, three, four consecutive bear bars. That means the downtrend is very strong. And then we can see that there's a bull bar as the pullback because the next bar is a bear bar again. So this small bull bar can act as the shallow pullback. So for the shallow pullback, then, and also with the strong market downtrend here, we can enter the market again to add up the position. So basically, we want to enter when we see this bear bar, even though this bear bar has a very big tail at the bottom. But it doesn't matter. In the strong trend or in a very strong setup, the signal bar doesn't matter. We can enter the market. And then in terms of the profit target, there are a few options. The first one is n times your actual risk, which is based on your study of the uh, historical chart or your back testing. Second is the uh, measured move. We can do the measured move like uh, the previous example. This time we measure from the uh, top of this first bear bar here and then measure down to the uh, bottom of the uh, last bear bar. This is the uh, distance. And then we measure again from the top of the pullback and measure down the same distance. That you can see that this measure move uh, is also met here. The third option for sure is the uh, S level 2 here. So we have three options and then you want to take the one that uh, is suitable for your strategy. And in the end you can see that even for the S2 here, uh, it's already reached. That means the market respect the uh, support level here, S1 and also S2. Like I mentioned before, for the level breakout, normally there's good opportunities for both scalping and the swing. So if you take the position at this bear bar here, you can swing your position, at least partly of your position to the end of the trend, or even before it reaches S2. So basically, if, if you want to scalp to take a, a quick profit, what you can do is that you use these three bear bars as the measure move and measure down here or you use the end times of your risk. And then for the rest of the position, you have to keep your stop at the top of this pullback. Otherwise, when the market comes back and you put your uh, stop back to the uh, break even point, you could really get stop out. So for swing, you have to give the market some uh, breathing room. And then you need to read the uh, price action as the trend develops. So when it comes here, you can see that the, the pullback is very shallow, then you means you, you want to keep holding your position until the end of the trend. And then the profit target here is very reasonable. You don't want to move any further at this point because the market already went down so long. And then after that, you can see the pullback is, is huge right now comparing to this pullback. The previous chart is a five minute chart. Now let's have a look at the same but 15 minute chart. So basically, you can see that we have the same level here when the market breaks down here with four consecutive bear bars, which means a very strong market. And then it goes down even to penetrate S1 right away. And then there's a pullback with the bull bar. At this time, if you enter the market, you want to enter at the bottom of this uh, bull bar. Basically, for the upper time frame, we don't care that much about the uh, bear bar or bull bar as the signal bar because the higher time frame, that means each bar is very large. We don't want to wait for another very good signal bear bar like this. When you enter here, it's already too late for you to enter the market. And then we can do the same thing like the measure move. Let's have a look on what 
what's going on with the measure move if we trade the 15 minute chart. So basically this is the first leg with four consecutive bear bars. We measure from the top of the first bear bar until the bottom of the last bear bar. And then we do the same thing, measure from the top of the pullback until the same distance. We can see that this small uh, bear bar comparing to the, uh, the bar before and after it is just small. And then it pulls back here and then reach the uh, target. Another angle to see this is why the markets just pull back here at this level. The same thing, other traders on the 15 minute chart take profit at this moment. That means you are competing with the uh, traders from different time frames, and then you need to find out which time frame is best for you. Even though later on the market really goes down to test the uh, S2 level here. If you enjoyed my video, please don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment. You can also go to my channel for more videos. Thank you.